Ryan Little. <laughs> Welcome to Months and Made This. My name is Michael and I cook vegan food. So if you are interested in that, definitely go ahead and click the subscribe button below. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. And you might as well join the channel as well because there are some great perks that you get if you help support this channel. You get recipes in PDF form without all the ads that are on my website. And you get access to all of the Months and Ate This videos. We're about 40 of them right now. And they're kind of my behind the scenes, more casual, chatty type of video. So go ahead and hit join, you will not regret it. Today, I'm very excited for the recipes that I'm making. I am making four dishes for you that all have one thing in common, and that is that they were originally made with tomatoes, but I've taken all of the tomatoes out and I'm subbing in watermelon. So I'm making a bruschetta, I'm making a panzanella, I'm making a gazpacho, and I'm making a pico de gallo. They're all so amazing, you'll be surprised how great it is with watermelon that you'll wonder why we ever use tomatoes in the first place. So the first thing I wanna show you before we get into all of those individual recipes is I'm gonna show you how I like to process this watermelon specifically for these different dishes that I'm gonna be making. So here's the watermelon half here. I've obviously already cut it in half. I'm the worst at choosing watermelons. I'm told that if it has the yellow and if it has some like sugar lines like this that it's a good um, ripe sweet watermelon. But um, I don't usually have great luck. This one is okay. But the great thing about these recipes that I'm showing you today is that you can take like watermelons that are only okay and make great dishes out of it. So if you get one that's just not so sweet, just make bruschetta, make panzanella. So I've got this half watermelon here. We're gonna make all four of these recipes with just one half. And the first thing I like to do is with a nice sharp knife, carefully remove the green. We don't wanna remove the white um, because I'll show you how we'll do that in just a moment. Admittedly, my knife could be a little bit sharper. So we're gonna move, remove all of the green. Um, and the white part, the uh, rind, I guess it is, I'm gonna be showing you a couple recipes that you can make with that next time. Um, I've been doing these one take Wednesday videos that are not filmed on Wednesdays, nor are they actually released on Wednesdays, but just like a slightly more personal video style. So I'll be showing you a couple ways to be able to use the watermelon rind. So green's coming off. The green part, oh God. Um, the green part really, just watch your fingers here. The green part really can't, you can't do anything with it other than compost it. So that's why we just want the green, green part off. Um, but the white part's completely edible. Um, I was making some dog treats out of it, which I still might. I did read online today that it might not be the best for dogs digestion, but Odie seems to like them and he hasn't had any problems. Um, I'll mention that in that next video I'm talking about, but we're almost there. The green part's off. I did work up a little bit of a sweat. That's admittedly the hardest or most difficult thing you're gonna be doing with these four recipes. So I'm just gonna put these aside. They'll be composted later. Let's start breaking this down even further. So because I'm making four recipes today, I'm going to cut this into quarters and it's obviously a lot easier to cut now that the green part is off, which I guess that is part of the rind. Maybe the green's the skin, the white's the rind. So cut into quarters. Now, for these pieces here, I like to cut it this way that I'm about to show you just so I can make sure to cut, let me move around here, to cut as much of the red part off as possible. And uh, I just follow the line. So I cut around, follow the line, go in probably about halfway through and then 
I can pop it out. Sometimes it's a little easier than others, but now we have the red and we have the white. So I'm gonna do that with all four of these sections and then we'll break these up even further for the individual recipes. That one went a lot smoother. Okay, so make sure you have a sharp knife, watch your fingers, be careful. But in the end, you should have the skin, which we're gonna compost. You should have the rind, which we're gonna use in our next recipe. And then we're gonna have the meat, which we're gonna be using today. So let me straighten this out and get everything away from here that I don't need. And then we'll actually start cutting it up into the little cubes that we need for the individual recipes. Odie loves watermelon, so I have to share with him. Is that good? I'll give you some more later. The full recipes, which are on MunsonMadeThis.com and linked below, all use about 12 ounces of watermelon each. You could obviously multiply that, make more, make less. Um, and there's going to be three distinct cutting styles that we need for each of these. So for the bruschetta and the pico de gallo, I'm going to want like quarter inch little cubes. So I'm just going to cut it into thin slabs. Cut those into thin strips and then make those into little cubes. So this particular one here is going to be for the bruschetta, which is also going to have fresh basil. It's going to have garlic, a little bit of balsamic vinegar. It doesn't have to be perfect. The pico, we're going to be doing that with little cubes also, but you could very easily do that in a blender or a food processor. So I'm just going to finish cutting this piece up into little cubes, throw it in the bowl, and move on to the next one. I have my bruschetta watermelon here all finished. I mean, look at how much this is. Imagine how many tomatoes you'd have to go through to get this much. And it's like $6 for this whole, or I paid $6 for this whole watermelon, of which this is only an eighth of, so I think it's quite economical as well. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm also gonna move these bowls because they were really loud. I've got my little labeling on here so I know what to use for which. And uh, we're gonna cut those, or the next ones up about the same shape and size for the pico, which again, if you just wanted to make a salsa with these, you could easily just throw everything in a food processor. Odie is absolutely glued to me today. I made the decision to share little pieces with him as I'm working. And actually, anytime I'm in here doing anything with watermelon, he loves it. He's glued to me. He'll probably be right here the entire time I make this recipe video. And if he's lucky, he might get some little pieces still. Like that one. The sound of a dog crunching watermelon is almost as cute as a dog crunching an apple. Almost. We have one more down. This is for the Pico. This is going to go behind me. And next one is for the Gazpacho, which I want probably like a little bit smaller than what I did for the Pico and the Bruschetta. Um, this as well, you could put this in the food processor, but the rest of the veggies and uh, ingredients for this are going to be put into the food processor. So I want these to just have a little bit more recognizable texture because it's you know we want to know that we're eating watermelon you'll taste it it's not overpowering like oh my god watermelon it's like wait what is this it's extra special there's something different about this i just can't put my finger on it so with the other two those are more of like an, a quarter of an inch whereas this one i want more of like an eighth of an inch so I actually forgot that uh, half of the watermelon for the gazpacho is going to be juiced. And by juiced, it's just gonna go into the food processor and pureed pretty heavily. So you really only need to do the 1 8 dice on half of the watermelon section. Uh, and now it's time for the last one, which is the easiest one because these are the biggest pieces. And that's for the panzanella, which is what my pan is for. And panzanella is an Italian bread salad. And we want these chunks to be bigger than a half inch, not quite a full inch, three quarters of an inch, I guess it would be. 
and that's to match the size of the bread that I've already grilled ahead of time. And I've already pre-cut the vegetable as well. And everything for that you want about the same size. All right, this is the last of the watermelon that needs to be cut up. So I'm gonna set everything aside, clean up a little bit, and then we'll get ready. We're gonna make the gazpacho first, which is so good. All right, so these are all the ingredients we need for the bruschetta. Just kidding. This is all the ingredients we need for the gazpacho. Uh, as I said, when I was cutting up, I need half of the watermelon to be turned into a juice. So I'm gonna just put half of this, there we go, half of this into the food processor and let this go. And the other is gonna stay this size. So put the lid on and juice. So this juiced watermelon is now going to go into the bowl with the minced watermelon. I think you could probably do this whole thing in a blender also if you wanted. Put it back on here. Now I have red and yellow bell pepper. The recipe on MunsonMadeThis.com is just going to call for red, but uh, I didn't want to go to the store and I didn't have enough of the red, so I had to move some things around. That is some cucumber some onion. Also, the recipe is going to call for only red onion, but I have a little bit of white onion in there as well. There's one clove of garlic, a little bit of olive oil, and some balsamic vinegar. This is just going to get pulsed. We want it to be blended together. We want it to be pretty fine, but we still want to be able to see some like individual colors instead of it just being a full juice like what we did with the watermelon. So pulsing away. Scrape down the sides. So this consistency here, if you wanted to make, um, instead of the pico, which we'll make in a minute, like a salsa, I think this would be a good texture for that as well. A little bit longer. Okay. This looks good. It's pretty fine, but you can still see individual colors. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm just gonna pour the uh, contents of the food processor here into this bowl. as messy as possible, obviously. Get everything out. And this is pretty much our gazpacho. It will, as it sets in the fridge, kind of juice up a little bit more. The flavors will marry together and mellow. Last thing is some salt, fresh black pepper. If you wanted to add some spice, you could add some jalapeno. If you wanted to add some fresh herbs, basil, uh, cilantro would be great. So now I'm just going to give this a taste and make sure the salt level is where I want it. I nailed it. This is so good. I just love the way that that watermelon is like something special, but it still is gazpacho. <sighs> All right, so this technically needs to hang out in the fridge for at least an hour, um, but I'm gonna plate it up for you here right now and just show you what I like to do to serve this. So let's pretend this has been hanging out in the fridge for at least an hour. I'm just gonna scoop this into a bowl here. This eats so well as a lunch, it could be an appetizer. Um, this recipe would serve probably about four people, um, but I, cleared an entire batch last night by myself. Whatever. Uh, so the uh, gazpacho, I have some crusty bread there. And then I'm going to just top it off. Ooh, trying to make this look pretty. Um, cute. <laughs> I'm a mess today. Uh, top this off with a little bit of avocado and then a drizzle of olive oil. And 
And there you have watermelon gazpacho. And now we have the P for Pico. Let's go ahead and assemble that because this comes together really easy once you have everything already chopped like I do. So we have our watermelon. To that, I'm adding some onion. Uh, the recipe will say all red onion, but again, I explained earlier. I didn't really explain. I just told you I'm mixing onions today, but red onion is preferred. I have some chopped garlic as well as a diced jalapeno. You don't like heat, don't add the jalapeno. Love heat, add some more. Um, before I add the cilantro, I'm going to juice one whole lime. And one thing about the watermelon that I would say is different than tomato is that watermelon just doesn't have the same acidity level. So I find when you're using this to substitute in for uh, tomatoes, you have to add a little bit more acid. So I'm being a little bit heavy handed with the lime um, as well. The other dishes all have a bit of like vinegar in them as well to just give that little bite of acidity. Lime juice goes in. Bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. And then I'm gonna mix this together and then I will add the cilantro. But look at this. It's like you just went to Chipotle. This also um, is best after at least an hour in the fridge. But if you were in a hurry, you could eat this right away. All right, let's go ahead and add the cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, completely leave it out. Um, I feel like I have to <laughs> disclose this about cilantro in every episode because I pretty much use cilantro in every one of my episodes. Okay, that looks beautiful. I'm gonna give this a taste just to make sure my salt is where I want it. So good, I nailed it again. So normally, like I said, I would set this aside, but let me show you how I like to serve this. I have my serving bowl here with some tostadas. I do prefer those two tortilla chips for this. If you wanted to cut the watermelon a little bit larger and do more of like a watermelon ceviche, same ingredients, that would be delicious as well. So just gonna fill this bowl. Again, you do wanna let this set for a little while, but it eats just fine right now as well. Top with a small little bit of fresh cilantro if you like it. And there we have our watermelon pico salsa. So we're gonna be making the bruschetta topping right now, which the bruschetta is the crispy bread part. We're making the stuff that goes on top, which is normally made with tomatoes. It's gonna be a lot like a pico de gallo, but it's got Italian flavor. So we have our chopped up watermelon here. To that, I'm adding some fresh chopped basil, ton of garlic, and as I said, acidity is really important when um, working with watermelon. So I'm gonna add a bit of balsamic vinegar to this. Pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna toss this around a little bit before I add the olive oil. Cause I do want the um, vinegar to try to seep into the watermelon a little bit, which I think the oil might prevent it, might seal the watermelon up a little bit. So just want it to absorb slightly. All right, let's add some olive oil. Not sure what that was. And might as well add some black pepper while I'm here. And that's it, that's bruschetta. So, Stir this around. Also, this would be nice if it had to hang out for about an hour, or you could eat it right now as well. So I've already uh, grilled up some bread. That's the actual bruschetta there, the crispy bread. And then I'm gonna add our topping to a bowl. You can already see there's a lot of great juice already forming, and that'll increase even more as it sits. And then just for pretty, I'm gonna add a little sprig of basil to the top. And there we have watermelon bruschetta. And it is time for our very last recipe, which is our panzanella, which is an Italian bread salad. Um, I've already 
charred up this bread in a pan with a little bit of olive oil. Um, it's just ciabatta bread, kind of nice and crispy, but still has a little bit of chew to it. We have our watermelon here, and let's start adding some other veggies. So I have red onion, red and yellow bell pepper, cucumber. I'm gonna add some fresh basil that I'm just gonna tear because I don't want it to be too fine. I want some larger pieces. And then in this jar is a dressing that I'm about to shake together. Balsamic vinegar, olive oil, a little bit of mustard and garlic, salt and pepper. And we want to dress the salad. We can do this probably up to an hour before we serve. So I like to dress this part of the salad and then toss it together. And then just before serving, toss the bread in with it. Um, a lot of people do like panzanella with the bread having soaked in it a little bit longer. I like the bread in there just before so it still retains a lot of texture, but it's okay to dress the uh, vegetable portions or fruit portions of the salad ahead of time. And that's it, we made panzanella. So I'm gonna show you how I like to plate this up and then uh, we will give everything a taste test. I'm only gonna be plating up about half of this right now, so I have half of that salad mixture and I'm gonna add about half of the bread that I have. Toss this together, the bread's gonna soak up the dressing uh, as well. The watermelon and other veggies or fruits, I guess they are, are releasing some of their juices and liquid. Everything is just coming together magically and putting it into a pretty bowl to serve it. And there we have watermelon bruschetta. Just kidding, watermelon panzanella. <laughs>minutes ago we had a half of a watermelon now we have four distinctly flavored beautiful summertime dishes we have a pico de gallo made with watermelon we have a bruschetta topping here with watermelon this delicious gazpacho and of course our panzanella uh, i've tasted these other ones just to make sure the seasoning is right but one thing i haven't given a taste to yet is this panzanella so i want to grab a couple ingredients here and give it a try of course the bread So, I learned that ketchup is not originally made with tomatoes. It's like mushrooms and fermented fish or something. So, I don't know how tomatoes got into that equation. Same thing with these. I don't know when tomatoes became the default for all of these, but I think watermelon actually might be superior. Everything here tastes so great, so vibrant, so fresh, and it's all done with watermelon, which is crazy because we just always think it should be tomato. So I hope these inspired you. I hope that you give these a try. If there's any other dishes that should be, made with, should be made with tomatoes that you think would be great with watermelon, definitely comment below and let me know what you would put watermelon in. Um, I will be back with my next episode, the One Take Wednesday episode, which is gonna talk about what to do with the watermelon rind, which we cut off and set aside. So definitely subscribe and uh, hit the little bell notification so you're alerted when that video comes out. Thank you to all of you that have been supporting this channel on Patreon and through YouTube channel memberships. You can click that join button down there to help support this channel as well. So I'll see you on Munson 8 this, and I will see you next time. Bye.